in 1977, having reached a depth of 3,293 meters. That's the year I was born. It was a good year. 1977. <laughs> <laughs> taken out from the cross cut was not processed for gold. It is the tunnel the only dug just to get to the gold relief. But some electric station. But so the practice on this mine was to supply 2,000 volts of alternating current down to this sub electric station, then further reduce it to 500 volts using a transformer, a step down. Tembega, mangi malagu ku dynamat box ku dulu le. Nanti mangi malagu dynamat box ku dulu le. Okay. So this is an under uh, underground water pump station. So this water pump that you see here, it is called a cameran. It's a cameran pump. It uses compressed air. It can pump up to three thousand liters per hour. Let's move further on to the next station of mining. We only think of blasting the rock to get at the gold. And obviously it is not a simple procedure. Many safety regulations need to be adhered to. One of the safety measures will be making sure that the dynamite it is kept safe until it is used. So back in the early 1900s, dynamite was the explosive mainly used in the mines. Brought down the mine in green boxes such as this. And then you will see the name inscribed on the lead, Alfred Nobel. He invented dynamite in 1863, and there it is. So this dynamite box holds 50 kilograms of dynamite, always kept locked. Only qualified mine workers were allowed to handle it. And then you see the roof picked like this for a very specific reason. It prevents miners coming along with carbide lamps or candles and putting it on top of a very, very explosive box. <laughs> Open flames and dynamite will mix. Thank <laughs> you. 
was used as a safety station. So the mine workers will have held a safety meeting here each and every morning. All aspects of safety are of paramount importance when mining. It is a dangerous job in a hostile environment. And the posters, the posters emphasize the importance of being aware of the dangers at all times. And the language used on the posters is Fanakalo. Fanakalo, language created from English, Africans, and Zulu. Lo pigini never near the as enza wena gula ambalapa first aid. Right. That uh, scratches can lead to infection. Get first aid. Right. Basop lo boom kalo Malaysia. Right. That's watch out for loader boom. My driver basop lo stick side. Drivers watch that side wall. So Fana Kalo is created from English, Africans, and Zulu. So this area was also used as a first aid station. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this device that you see up here, it is called an ore pass. As you can see, it's a simple but effective design. So the ore from the level above was poured down this pass, sloped at 35 degrees. And then they brought the cocoa pens into place and then they will simply lift the cross plank and let the ore slide into the pen until it was full. Once it was full, it got pushed to the shaft to be hoisted to the surface or mule drawn. Some of the mines around the area, they used mules to pull these cocoa pens. The mules were kept underground in a three month cycle. This cocoa pen carries a ton, one ton of rock. And then the mule will put up on eight tons, like eight cocoa pens in a row. So this board that you see here, it's a, it's a tally board. And shift boards will measure how many tons of rock you have mined during your weekend shift. One ton, two ton, three ton, four tons. The holes are in rows of tens for easy counting. If you manage to get more of these cocoa pens to the surface, that meant you get a bonus. Ah, mm. okay. Mm. Is this right? Is this Looks like the rock detached itself from the hanging wall. That's the mining term for the rock above us. And the rocks on either side are called the side walls. The floor, it is called the foot wall. So the reason for this specific rock fall is that the hanging wall was not properly supported. But don't worry, they fixed it since then. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when we get to the mined out areas, I will show you how the hanging wall must be properly supported to prevent a rock fall. This is a compressed air operated drilling machine called a drifter or a diamond drill. It is cradle mounted for use by two operators. It was also water injected. So the water was fed to the front to keep the drill bit cool and also to keep down the dust. So let's go and have a look at where the mine workers would have used this drilling machine. Thank you.